God that his people don't know. Amen. Because you don't know because it's not important to you or you haven't studied it or the church that is supposed to teach you his will is teaching you your will because your will sounds a lot more important. <laughs> and your will will get you more excited. But his will is what's important. Amen. And so we need to know what is his will? What is God doing? Because if I'm a part of this, man, this is an eternal plan. I want to be a part of this plan. And I want to know what are we doing, Lord? Isn't it great that uh, when people have a focus, when people have a vision, that things can happen more positively and better when people know where they're going? Yes. People become Christians and they have no idea that God is redeeming them out of this world. And that God is, is in the process of redeeming them. And that God has already fulfilled so many prophecies exactly on time that they can look back and look at those prophecies and say, Wow, if God has done all this shortly, the rest of it is going to be complete. Amen. That's what, see, I'm very interested in knowing that God is real, not in the fact that he just, that I became a Christian and I'm now a religious person. Right. That, that does me no good. In, uh, in Psalms 48, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we don't have time, but I want you to go to uh, uh, verse 13 because Psalms is the 19th book of the, of the Bible. It's the 48th chapter. You understand? The 19th book of the, of, the, of the Bible is going to let you know everything that's going to happen once the 1900s hit. And so when we get to Psalms 48, it's going to tell you, hey, this is what's going to happen in 1948. What's going to happen? From verse 1, it says, uh, it, it's, it's talking about the Lord and how he should be praised in his mountain. It says the holy people have now back in the land. And he says, but the, the, the nations of the world has come against us. But God has defended the nation of Israel when they came against them in war. And so... In 1948, when they moved back into the land, you had five Arab nations come against them in war, and when they came against them, this small, minute amount of Jewish people whipped the five countries. We just became a nation yesterday. How did they do it? The world saw a miracle. And therefore, the Jews were back in their land. And they were like, and, and, and matter of fact, they called for the ceasefire. And so now, the Jews are back in the land, and I want to, now, in verse 13, it says this. This is important. It says, consider well her ramparts. When you see this, he says, view her citadels, that you may tell them to the what? Some say following generation, some say next generation. God told me, when you become a minister, you better learn Hebrew. It's the Lador HaHatron. It's the last generation. So, God says, when you see 1948, this event happened in 1948, and you see the miracle of me protecting my people and bringing them back in their land in this, at this time, know for sure that this is the Lador HaKaron. This is the last generation. Now, I'm doing this because the message, remember, is why is 2012 so important? Because I don't believe in Mayan calendars, nor do I don't believe in the Mayan religion, but these people seem to know something because they're planning something. And they're planning something on a deep spiritual level that we better know and understand what they're doing. Okay, that's what happened in 1948. Now. From 1947, if you count the last generation of 70 years, you would come to the year 2017. This was the reason for everyone thinking that 2010 to 2017 is the end. Because 70 years from 1947 would give you 2017. So, many people, including myself, begin to say, well, if that's the last seven years, then of course the rapture is going to happen in 2010. So this was the understanding. 
Now, but the Jews didn't move back into the land until 1948. So 70 years from 1948 is 2018, not 2017. So you're looking at God dealing with two separate groups of people. He's dealing with the Gentiles, which are you and me. We are not the chosen people of God unless you're Jewish. And if you're a chosen people, you're going to have a hard time because the Jewish people have had a hard time wherever they've gone. Amen. But now, if you are a Gentile, God has reserved a spot in heaven for you. Amen. He has sent out an invitation to you. And that invitation is to become a part of the bride of Christ so that you can be a part of the feast festival and the marriage that Jesus is going to have in the future. Amen. And so all of us have accepted Christ. We're a part of this bride. But the, the ending for the Gentile church and the ending for the Jewish nation are two separate endings. Let's go to Psalms 117. And 118. I kind of like these glasses. <laughs> We're still being educated, okay? All right. Amen. In Psalms 117, it says, praise the Lord. This is the shortest. Now, I want to add, I want you to understand something. You go from Psalms 1 to Psalms 117, 118, representing the last two years of God's prophecy. 2017, 2018. Now, it says in Psalms 117, praise the Lord. All you nations, extol him, all you people. For great is the love, his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to read it, what it would say in Hebrew, because it would say, Hallelujah, go ye, which means you Gentiles. You understand? He's saying in 2017, that's the end of the Gentile reign. So he's saying, hallelujah, praise you Gentiles. Praise God, you Gentiles. Because I am bringing you into the kingdom of God. Because this is the end of your Gentile reign over my people. But when we get to Psalms 118, It says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Let Israel now say, his love endures forever. So now he's not talking to Gentiles. In 2018, he's talking to the Jewish people. So we have two separate endings here. Two separate enemies because God is dealing with two separate people. He loved the, the Jewish people and he has promised that he is going to, to marry the Jewish people and he's going to bring the Jewish back people back into his fold. But he's also promised the Gentiles salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. But he's going to end them differently. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Amen. It says here, now listen, in chapter 24, this is when the, the, the disciples, the Teladim, they said to, to, to Yeshua, they say, well, when was the end of the world and how will we know that all these things are coming? Well, he explains it to them. But he says, now this will be the end. This is how you know when the end. It says, in verse 29, immediately after the distress of those days. The distress of what days? The distress of the tribulation. After the distress, 
and the agony of the tribulation, it says, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels uh, with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather the elect from the four corners, uh, from the, uh, the four winds, uh, one end of heaven to the other. So now, that is going to be the end. The ending is Christ coming on a cloud. In glory and in power. That's the end of what? The Gentile. Yes. Guess what? Once Christ returns in his glory, it's not, still not over for the Jewish era. Amen. You know why? Some things have to be done. A temple has to be built. All those people that got destroyed in Jerusalem and in Israel because they were coming to attack the nation that God loved, their bodies all over the land. Ezekiel says seven months they will only be cleaning the land. And then the temple has to be rebuilt. And the scripture says Jesus himself will rebuild the temple. So let's go to, to, to uh, Daniel chapter 24. Daniel chapter 9. Did I say that? You did. Well, at least you're listening. That's good. Wednesday, well, they, they let me go to Jude chapter 14. <laughs> How can you go to Jude chapter 14? How many chapters in the book of Jude? One. One. I was looking for Jude chapter 14. It's like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm trying to say it. Y'all help me. I'm up here. It's not easy. I'm going to let you preach one day. And you will know it's not easy. All right. You in Daniel chapter 9? Yeah. Now watch what it says concerning the end of the Jewish era. Verse. Chapter 9, verse 24. It says, 77 are decreed for your people and, uh, and for your holy city to finish transgressions, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision of the prophecy, and to anoint the Kadosh Kadoshim, to anoint the Holy of Holies. To anoint the Holy of Holies is a sacred place within the temple where only the priest gets to go. Amen. So God is saying the end of the Jewish era is when the Holy of Holies has been anointed by the presence of God. Amen. That's not when it's coming on a cloud because the temple is not built yet. Right. So they still got some time to go before their time is done. Amen. So, to, so 200 or 2017 will not be the end of the G Gentile, but the Jewish era, but only the end of the Gentile era. Why does it have to end 2017? Because it's the end of 6,000 years. Amen. And God will not work past his Sabbath. Amen. You understand? Amen. God will not work past his Sabbath. God created this world in six days. And on the seventh day, he did what? Rested. He rested from all of his work. This was a precursor to understand for 6,000 years I will deal with man, but on the, at the end of 6,000 years, I will take a thousand years Sabbath because a day is up to me as a thousand years and a thousand years as unto the Lord, right? Amen. So God is going to rest for a thousand years, whereas Jesus will reign and rule in Jerusalem on this earth. Yes. With each and every one of us as kings and a, and a royal priesthood working under the authority of Christ. Yes. yes. This is his will. Amen. This is his will. For a thousand years to reign and rule with Christ on the earth as he reigns as king. Amen. Now, um, I want you to go to uh, Acts chapter 15. 